Shalom and blessings in Messiah the Branch. This is the uh, end of May 2016. Today we will be talking about, uh, hopefully very briefly, uh, the Ezekiel 4 chart by Victor Hodaf, who was the uh, repeat of the first angel's message in the Advent movement, beginning in uh, 1930, 1929-1930. This chart is a point of particular contention, a certain uh, area of it, uh, between Charles Pace and myself uh, to determine how the Sabbath truth was polluted in the um, early days of the Advent movement from 1844 onward. I'm going to go over this in, in uh, some detail. I'll try to keep it down to about 20 minutes or so uh, and make it very as clear as possible to expose the broad application that Charles Pace makes, uh, attempting to say that the Sabbath of 1844-1847 was completely false, and that Ellen White only presented a concept of the true Sabbath, not the true Sabbath at all. And we must remember that Sister White was given uh, direct visions concerning the Sabbath truth and its validation as she learned it from Joseph Bates, uh, her in a uh, James White accepted the Sabbath after a, a, a brief time of study and uh, prayer to confirm it uh, as the bit part of the uh, two major points of truth of the third angel's message of 1844. First of all, uh, I would like to I'll blow this um, portion of the chart up or the major portion of it, to get a clearer view. This chart is found in uh, One Shepherd's Rod, page 133. It's a fold-out chart, and this is an exact uh, duplication of it uh, with colorization. And uh, the whole chapter is quite important to read. Uh, you should read Victor Hodaf's uh, uh, revelation of the Ezekiel 4 prophecy uh, when you can all of it it's it's a long chapter but it's quite valuable and what what I would like to show and emphasize here is, uh, in the points of contention but blow it up even more is this part right here that is contended uh, by Charles Pace and I need to really clarify what's being shown here. Um, we noticed that all through the Protestant Reformation, all through these six steps of truth from uh, Luther, Knotts, Wesley, Campbell, and Miller, that there are dots throughout these progressions of truth, and those dots represent pollution polluted truths. Truths nevertheless, but um, that they have been tainted with uh, man's ideas, which is part of the Ezekiel 4 prophecy being uh, that those truths, all true, true that they were, nevertheless were baked up upon man's dung or man's ideas, and that the full truth didn't come until after 1844. Here we see, um, most relevant to our consideration here, right here, the 2300 days, so what we see here in this circle of truth that Victor Hodaf depicted, he says here all these different grains, this is uh, um, a, a enlargement, so it's not showing the top part here, but all these truths are all in one vessel, as he says here, Ezekiel 4.9. Well, we see the most important truths here after the truths of the Reformation, the six steps of the Reformation. The most important ones are the 2300 days and the Sabbath truth. Then comes first angel message, second angel message, and then the third angel's message. And of course the third angel's message uh, encompassed the Sabbath truth, and uh, which was the one of the two key truths uh, that Ellen White brought out. So it's these messages are shown separately, or at least the Sabbath and 2300 days, to emphasize them as in the transition of 1844. Now we'll notice here the 2300 days has a few speckles at the beginning of it 
we know that William Miller did not get the 2300 day date uh, fulfillment right. Uh, right at first, there were were three disappointments, or rather three dates uh, given. The last one was correct, but we see here from this chart that uh, there was a first disappointment April 19th, uh, beginning of the tarrying time in 1844 in the spring. And then the midnight cry came in the um, uh, first day of the fifth month, August 15th of that year. And then finally the great disappointment here in August, uh, or rather October 22nd, uh, which patterns after the, uh, the type of the, um, the uh, decrees by Artaxerxes in 357. So here, uh, so here we see uh, on this chart that the 2300 days had some um, misunderstanding at first that was corrected, uh, and that it still it was still a truth uh, for the uh, key truth for the Advent movement. Next came the Sabbath truth as he depicts here. Now notice Charles Pace says the Sabbath truth was polluted from the beginning. No, it was not. Uh, otherwise, Ellen White would not have been given a direct vision concerning the Sabbath to validate what was being taught at that time. So we see here the Sabbath truth. There is no pollution here at the beginning of it. Okay, it was correct as Ellen White uh, presented it after she learned it from Joseph Bates. And they tested it. They studied it. They, they understood the calendar. They researched the calendar. They understood that the weekly cycle had never been changed since creation. And had it been changed, uh, we would not have been accountable for the Sabbath, uh, either in 1844 or today. Uh, Charles Pace presents an entirely different calendar, and he's only one voice. And the word says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a thing is established. And Ellen White also stated in early writings that many, that some, rather some, would step off the platform of truth, and right here is the platform of truth. 2300 days, the Sabbath and sanctuary truth, the first angel, second angel, and third angel's message, especially the third angel's message, which was the first sealing message of these three messages, first, second, and third. So we see here the Sabbath truth begins without any pollution, no symbolic dots indicating that it was polluted. It was correct as first understood. So why do the dots appear later after the Sabbath truth is presented in 1844? Well, we're going to go to the very words of Victor Hoddeff in One Shepherd's Rod to find out what those dots of pollution are. Along with what Victor Hoddeff states, I would add, that the pollution of the Sabbath in Adventism would also include the Lunar Sabbath theory, which has been around since Victor Hoddeff's time and before, and also Charles Pace, Twilight, highly modified Solar Sabbath theory, which is very innovative and very deceptive. So we see here that along with what Victor Hoddeff is going to say, I'm going to read it here, uh, two pages, we can see that there is other factors uh, bringing about the pollution of the Sabbath after it was given in 1844-1847. Um, probably came in 1845. But that's all part of the Third Angel's message here. And you notice the Third Angel's message has no dots of pollution whatsoever. First, second, and third angel's message, not before and not after. So we have pure truths from 1844 forward, and relatively pure, and certainly pure enough, first and second angel's message, as it was proclaimed uh, by William Miller, and ultimately purified by Ellen White herself when she was shown the true meaning of William Miller's message is 2300 days ending and what actually happened through the vision given to Hiram Edson uh, right uh, the day or so after the Great Disappointment when he saw this heavenly sanctuary uh, in heaven and they understood the nature of the Great Disappointment. So now we're going to go to Victor Hoddeff's um, study uh, on Ezekiel 4, uh, Shepherd's Rod uh, Book 1 beginning on page 114. Please study this for yourself. Uh, you, can get, you can find this online.
uh, actually in a download, a free download. Uh, also, uh, if you can purchase the books, um, the Shepherd's Rod series, you, it's also good to have the have the printed version of these uh, of this literature that uh, all of the Shepherd's Rod literature from Victor Hodup. I'm going to go here to um, page 124. Our main interest here is Victor Hodup's uh, explanation of Ezekiel chapter 4 verses 12, 14, and 15, where he talks about how the six grains were baked. And this is a key point of contention. What does it mean, these, these polluted grains? Uh, so here, we'll start here at the middle of page uh, 124, where Victor Hodup states, the prophet was told that he could not use wood or coal to bake the cakes upon, but that he should dung, use the dung that cometh out of a man. Ezekiel, to Ezekiel, it was too repulsive and pleaded to be excused. The Lord made an allowance, not by compulsion, but for Ezekiel's sake only, by telling Ezekiel to bake it with cow's dung. And, um, of course, symbolically, cow's dung it represents um, the waste of a, an animal that's a clean animal, but we know the cow in Isaiah 7 represents the spirit of prophecy herself. Going on here, uh, the 13th verse gives an, ex gives an explanation of the symbol as follows. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. The symbol is every portion of truth that has come so far has been polluted including the last one, and he puts in brackets here, Sabbath. Now, if we were to stop reading there, we would think, well, Charles Pace is correct in what he says. The, the Sabbath is all wrong, but that's not what Victor Hodov says. Let's continue reading here. He says, the Sabbath, the last one, the Sabbath, notwithstanding all the instructions given, line upon line, precept upon precept. The picture tells the story. Symbols do not lie. Instead of being offended because we are told of our failings, we should only praise God that in His mercy He has made a call for reformation that we may not be left to perish in our sins but are given an opportunity to choose whom we will serve. Next paragraph. The question may be asked, how have we polluted God's truth? Only one of the many references will be quoted here, Volume 1, uh, pages 471-472. That's uh, from Ellen White, uh, Volume 1 of the Testimonies. She says, a great mistake has been made by some who profess present truth by introducing merchandise in the course of a series of meetings. Ministers have stood in the desk and preached a most solemn discourse and then by introducing merchandise and acting the part of a salesman, even in the house of God. The burden of selling our publication should not rest upon ministers who labor in word and doctrine. Volume 8, page 250. I saw our instructor, Christ, pointing to the garments of so-called righteousness, stripping them off. He laid bare the defilement beneath. Then he said, un, said to me, Can you not see how they have pretentiously covered up their defilement and rottenness of character? How is the faithful city become an harlot? My father's house is made a house of merchandise, a place whence the divine presence and glory have because there is weakness and strength is lacking. Thus we have proof that every truth thus far has been polluted, including the Sabbath. Uh, this is what Victor Hodef defines as the pollution of the Sabbath that came in 1845, 1847, as part of the third angel's message, which was not polluted, but became polluted in time because of a lack of regard, lack of sanctity put on the Sabbath by the church in general and church leaders and the pastors who would Sell, sell publications on the Sabbath, which they're not supposed to do. There's no buying or selling, or even talking about buying and selling on the Sabbath. And that was a problem in Ellen White's day, and it, it does continue today.
I've, I've heard it myself. So this was the pollution of the Sabbath. Not the concept initially as it was given to uh, Joseph Bates and Ellen White's and even as observed by the Seventh-day Baptists, no. Uh, had the weekly cycle been lost in history, uh, these people in th that time, uh, particularly in the 1800s, they had access to libraries, books, uh, historical references. They would have known, they would have been shown and Ellen White in particular would have been shown that the Sabbath had been polluted or lost or uh, the pollution aspect of the Sabbath was its being lost in history. Uh, no one can say when. It's just a presumption and a wild claim. Um, in other places she uh, does uphold specifically that the weekly cycle has continued unbroken since it was given uh, creation week at the end of creation week after the uh, marriage institution had been uh, given so those two institutions stand since creation uh, marriage and the Sabbath have never been changed and never been lost otherwise we would not be accountable through the entire Advent movement from Ellen White to Victor Hoddeff even through Ben and Lois Road we wouldn't have been accountable for it and now we're told by Charles Pace, now we are accountable for it because he's told us the true Sabbath and it ultimately winds up on, of all things, the very day that Rome proclaims as their day of rest, as the Lord's day, that they changed the solemnity from the seventh to the first day of the week. Um, that's quite a, quite a claim and it needs to be, it needs to be uh, validated or either validated or invalidated through the testimony of the prophets. As 1 uh, Corinthians 14 states, the, sub, the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. We cannot just take a major platform of truth from 1844 onward and say it's, it's not true. Not going to happen. Uh, Ellen White said that in early writings that many that some would step off the platform of truth to examine it. Some would step back on, but she says others would not. Here is her uh, statement, um, one of her several statements on this platform of truth uh, from the book Story of Redemption. She states this also in the early writings. I'll read this uh, brief paragraph here so you understand what, what's at stake here. She states here, I saw a company who stood well guarded and firm, giving no countenance to those who would unsettle the established faith of the body. God looked upon them with approbation. I was shown three steps, the first, second, and third angel's messages. Said my accompanying angel, Woe unto him, truly, woe unto him who shall move a block or stir a pen of these messages. The true understanding of these messages is of vital importance. The destiny of souls hangs upon the manner which in which they are received. I was again brought down through these messages and saw how dearly the people of God purchased their experience, and it, it had been obtained through much suffering and severe conflict. God had led them along step by step until he had placed them upon a solid, immovable platform. Now remember, this is a solid, immovable platform. I saw individuals approach the platform and examine the foundation. Some with rejoicing immediately stepped upon it. Others commenced to find fault with the foundation. They wished improvements made and then the platform should be made more pure perfect and the people much happier. Well this is what Charles Pace is doing. He's trying to make improvements to the platform of truth which include the Sabbath and Sanctuary Truth of 1844-1845. And he likes to do what he calls purify the truth of the former messengers and eventually it doesn't even look like what the messengers presented. Uh, and what they actually wrote about, be it Ellen White, Victor Hoddeff, Ben Roden, or Lois Roden. Concluding here, she says, Some stepped off the platform to examine it and declared it to be laid wrong. Well, I, dis I agree with this statement here. Or rather, I agree with her statement here. 
that some declare the plat uh, fat platform to be laid wrong that the Sabbath and 2300 days especially the Sabbath was polluted and completely wrong the concept was true but the actual message on the day was wrong I completely disagree but Ellen White pr predicted this she says here but I saw that nearly all stood firm upon the platform and exhorted those who had stepped off to cease their complaints for God was the master builder and they were light they were fighting against him they recounted the wonderful work of God which had excuse me which had led them to the firm platform the firm platform and in union raised their eyes to heaven and with a loud voice glorified God this affected some of those who had complained and left the platform and they with humble look again stepped upon it well anyone who has stepped off the platform and considered and embraced what Charles Pace is saying needs to step back on the platform because the the platform the foundational truths of the Advent movement were laid correctly and as again as we see here in the uh, Ezekiel 4 chart by Victor Hodef all these key truths in one vessel uh, were laid correctly were unpolluted with the minor exception of the 2300 days because it was uh, uh, not fully understood by William Miller until October 22nd 1844 but the general uh, prophecy was true in every aspect and we can, again we see here the Sabbath truth did not begin with any pollution no symbolic pollution here in the beginning but becomes polluted sometime after uh, 1847 as Ellen White uh, described as Victor Hodef uh, um, elaborates in One Shepherd's Rod 120, page 124 and 125 uh, which I just read so everyone needs to study this chart in particular and test whether or not what Charles is saying is true or not we are we are to uh, instructed in scripture to test the spirits whether or not they are of God or not or if they are of the enemy or of the uh, spirit of Rome Uh, this chart is was brilliantly depicted by Victor Hodef and uh, quite inspired of the Holy Spirit uh, my emphasis here has been on the beginning of the Advent movement here in this circle this one vessel which Ezekiel 4 speaks about Ezekiel 4 9 moving all the way up to this line of what is called the line of purification uh, or Ezekiel 9 coming into the completely purified church the second brass mountain uh, which is this depicted here the first brass mountain is here representing the apostolic church of 2000 years ago and that mountain becomes a type of this mountain over here to the right Revelation 18 1 is fully expressed here at, at uh, this line of demarcation line of purification moving into the um, pure completely purified message up up here so please study the symbols study this chart study what Victor Hodd have said understand that the Sabbath that Ellen White kept the Sabbath that Victor Hodd have kept the Sabbath that Benjamin Roden kept and that Lois Roden kept and that we most of us still keep today is the true Sabbath the purification of the Sabbath is in observing it the way it is supposed to be observed carefully putting away all commerce all anything that is not Sabbath uh, related uh, scriptural spiritual uh, on those in those holy hour those 24 hours from sunrise sunset to the following sunset and uh, again uh, I want to emphasize that all the first second and third angels messages all through the first vessel of 18 1890 as it or before 1890 from 1844 all up to this line of purification are all it's a pure message there are no symbolic dots of pollution within these three messages this is what Ellen White terms the platform of truth which includes the Sabbath and sanctuary truth 2300 days 
after the 2300 days was understood after October 22nd. Uh, and that truth was purified. Uh, the, t the time was correct, but the event was incorrect. That uh, William Miller was expecting Christ to come in the clouds, literally. But in fact, the, as the truth unfolded in the days after the Great Disappointment, October 22nd, that it was understood that Christ wasn't coming to earth, but he was coming to the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary to enact and complete the final phase of his ministration in the heavenly sanctuary, uh, represented by the Day of Atonement um, in type and anti-type of uh, his work as the, our great high priest. So thank you for your attention. We're at the 26 minute mark and um, thank you for your attention. Uh, prove all things, hold fast that which, which is good. Uh, shalom and blessings.